Hello, my name is Mr. Bob. Welcome to my Algebra 1 video series. This video covers Chapter 1, Section 7, titled Subtracting Real Numbers. By the end of this video, you will have reviewed methods for subtracting real numbers and applying subtraction. This includes reviewing using a number line model, evaluating expressions, absolute values, and subtracting rational numbers. Additionally, you will review real-world problem using real number subtraction. If you'd like me to cover any of these topics in greater detail, please leave your request in the comment section below. Please subscribe to this channel and leave a like if you find this video to be helpful. Thank you. Okay, looking at objective one, subtracting real numbers. So it's telling us something here. It says you can learn to add real numbers and to find the opposite of a number. You can use these two concepts to understand how to subtract real numbers. The number line below models the sum of 2 plus negative 6 and the difference 2 minus 6. So you look at this, look at this line here, the number line, and it says, what does it say? It says start at 2. It says right here, 2 plus negative 6, right? So it says start here at 2 and then add negative 6. So that means when you're adding a negative number, you're going to go to the left. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And when you get all the way down here to, to the left, negative 6, you're going to end up with negative 4. And that's what the answer is. The difference here, 2 minus 6, if you look at it, both 2 plus negative 6 and 2 minus 6 have the same value, negative 4. No matter how you run the number line to get the same answer. This illustrates the following rule for subtracting real numbers. And here's the rule. Subtracting numbers. To subtract a, real, a number, add its opposite. And we learned about opposites earlier. So it's opposite. If it's 4, negative 4. If it's negative 7, it's 7, right? The opposite. So example, 3 minus 5 is the same as 3 plus the opposite, a negative 5. And that equals negative 2. Or you can look at it this way. 3 minus a negative 5 is equal to 3 plus 8. 3 plus 5 is 8. Because the two negatives cancel to make a positive. So it ends up being 3 plus 5 is 8. Okay. Okay. Example 1. Using a number line model. So here's what we are just talking about. So it says find 4 minus 7. So what do we do? We start with the line, number line, we can draw it, we can put off some hatchet, hashes on there, and we can mark one of them as a four. We'll put this one as a four right here. And it says start four. Since we're going negative, subtracting, we go to the left. When you're adding, you go to the right. So we're going to go to the left. How many places? Seven places, seven units. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Where do we end up at? We end up at negative 3. Right there at negative 3. So 4 minus 7 is negative 3. Or you could say 4 plus a negative 7. Right? Same thing. And you see how to use, use the number line. Okay, example 1. Check your understanding. You know what that means. I'm going to ask you to pause the video and try it yourself. So what does it say? Use the number line to find each difference. So you're going to have to draw the number lines in. Nothing, nothing big, nothing fancy. They're all small numbers. So I'll wait for you. Give it a try. Draw them up and see what you come up with. And then I'll draw them when you get back and we'll compare them, I guess. Okay, I think you've, had, you've stopped the video. I hope you did. And you're back. So let's take a look at it. So... For problem A, or okay, it says 2 minus 6. Well, I'm going to draw a line. 2, okay. I'm going to start here at 2. Since I'm going with negative 6, I had to put the 2 on the right-hand side because I'm, you know we're going to the left, right? So 2. So this is 1 and 0. So here's 0, here's 2. And we're going to go, I don't know how far yet. I mean, I do know, but I'll draw in some tick marks here. So it says... 2, so I'm going to start at 2, and since we're going negative, it means to the left, I'm going, how many? 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Right here. So I start here 
and go there, minus 6. Where are we left at? Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. The answer, negative 4. Let's try the next one, B. Negative 1, and we're going to subtract 4. So, again, another line. And here's 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. I'll draw a little arrow on the end there. I'll call this 0 here. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. And we're going to start at negative 1. And we're going to go negative 4 from there, right? So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, right here. So where do we end up at? Negative 5. Start here, go 4 in that direction, minus 4. You end up at negative 5. How about this one? C. 3, minus 3, minus 8. Okay, so I'm going to draw the line again. Put an arrow here, here, and I'm going to start. This is starting at negative 3. So we're going to go here, one right here, negative 3. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So if this is negative 3, this is negative 5 right here, all right? Negative 7, negative 9, right? I mean, I, they, I, I goofed all that. Let's see. 3, 4, four 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Oh, I, I added an extra one. 10, 11. I'm sorry. I, I thought I counted them all evenly. But here we are, negative 11. So I'll count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Negative 8. So we start here, and we go all the way down here, and stop here after counting off 8 of them, minus 8. And we end up at 3 minus 8 gives us 11. Okay, and then finally we have on D, we're going to draw the line. We're going to start here at a positive number. And we're at 7, and then 6, 5, 4, 3, okay? And we're going to go negative 2 from a positive 7, right here, to, and we're going to subtract 2. So we'll start here and go 1, 2. So we're going to go from here to here, at, to that point right here. And what is this? 6, 5. So our answer here is 5. Okay, here's example two. It says, using a tile model. Uh, use a lot of tile models. I remember back in pre-algebra, but so we're just going to take a look at this one. I'm not going to get too involved with these tile models, but still, it says, find three minus a negative five. Three minus negative five. So how do we get to that? We start off with the three. Here's the three we started off with right here, okay? Three. And then in order to subtract a negative five, they added in, if you remember, remember these, these are zero pairs, I think, or negative, whatever they call them, I think, yeah, zero pairs. So they added in five zero pairs because we're doing negative five. So the zero pairs mean that all of the yellow ones here are plus one or positive one, and all the red tiles are negative, okay? So it says, add zero pairs until there are five negative tiles. Well, here they are, one, two, three, four, five. We've added it in. And then what does it say? It says remove the five negative tiles. So get rid of the five negative tiles because we're subtracting five negative tiles from three. And what are we left with? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So remove five tiles and you get there are eight positive tiles left. So there it is. The three minus a negative five is equal to eight. Okay. Okay, so here we are in example three. It says subtracting rational numbers. So we're not, we're going to skip over now. You could use, if you wanted, number lines or whatever, tile models. But we're just going to do the math directly. We've learned enough now to know how to look at and manipulate the numbers. So it says simplify each expression. So in problem A, we're going to take negative four, and we're going to subtract a negative nine. So minus a negative nine, right? So when we... I rewrote it down here. This is the problem. I rewrote it, and I switched 
the opposite of nine with positive nine. Negative nine, I change it to it's positive not nine or the opposite. So now I have four, negative four plus nine. And that became plus nine because this pair right here now become positive. Negative times a negative is a positive. So now it's negative four plus nine. And negative, so now the opposite of not, negative nine is nine. And now we're going to add. And when you add negative four and you add nine, you're going to end up with five. Okay. And how about here? Let's go to B. Three quarters minus negative 11 twelfths. So it's not any different than the other one. We're going to take, we have three quarters. I'm rewriting it. Three quarters minus a negative 11 twelfths. And that equals three quarters plus 11 twelfths, right? The negative and the negative causes a positive. So now we have 11 twelfths and plus three quarters. Okay, so we just swapped out the negative 11 with the one with the positive, the opposite. So now what do we have? 9 twelfths plus 11, uh, 9 twelfths plus 11 twelfths because we converted three quarters to twelfths. So you, to get four to a 12, you got to multiply by three. We multiply the top and the bottom by three, and we get nine twelfths. Then now we can add them. Nine and 11 is 20 twelfths. Okay, 20 twelfths. And which is if we now simplify this to, to its simplest form, we can get five thirds because we can take a four out of both the top and the bottom. Four out of the top gives us a five, four out of the bottom gives us a three, and five thirds or one and two thirds. That's written in simplest form. Okay, example three, check your understanding. So, uh, as before, I'd like you to pause the video and try to do these on your own. And when you get back, we'll work them together. Okay, same as we've just been doing. I'll wait. Okay, now that you've had time and I know you've done the work, we'll go ahead and try these together. So let's look at them. We have, we have um, problem A. It says negative 6 minus 2. Well, that's pretty straightforward, right? It's, in this case, you start at negative 6 and you go 2 from there, right, to the left. So you end up at negative 8. So end up negative 8 is your answer on that one. How about B? <clears throat> we're going to start at 8, okay, and then we're going to subtract a negative 4, which we, we switch that to a positive 4, right? So 8 plus 4, you know, if you have 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, so we're at 12, right? So 12 is the answer on that one, okay? How about this one? <clears throat> 3.7 minus a negative 4.3. Well, these two negatives become a positive. And therefore, we have a positive 4.3 and a positive 3.7. Well, 4 and 3 is 7, and 7 and 3 is 1. 0.7 and point is 1. So the answer to this ends up being 8.0. And finally here, we have a D. We have negative 8 ninths, negative, negative 8 ninths minus, I'm going to say positive, because these two make a positive, five sixths. Well, we can't add or subtract these directly. We have to get this common denominator, right? Well, to make a common denominator, we can see that nine times two is 18 and three times six, okay, is 18. So in order to get this common denominator, we can, we can go ahead and just multiply this by two and this one by three, all right? So we'll end up with minus, 16 eighteenths plus 5 times 3 is 15 eighteenths. And if you add these together, you're going to end up with negative 1 eighteenth. Okay? Okay, objective 2, applying subtraction. Recall that when you simplify an expression, you work within grouping symbols first. And we, we did that in the past. Where you have the, even if you have seven sets of grouping signals, you go to the innermost one and handle that, and then you step out one and then handle that one, you step out to the next one, and you come up one at a time as you get out further and further and further. So 
absolute value symbols are grouping symbols. They're just like a grouping symbol. Okay, so you first have to find the value of the expression within the absolute value symbols before finding the absolute value. So you have to resolve whatever is inside before you can then say, okay, so what is the absolute value of that particular number? Okay. Okay, example four, absolute values. Let's try one. So to simplify the absolute value of 5 minus 11. Well, so there it is, 5 minus 11 right here. What's the absolute value of it? Well, you can't do anything with this. as You can't say, well, what's the, what am I going to do? Say minus 5, minus, what am I, how am I going to get this answer to call the absolute value? So what you have to do is you have to resolve the inside first. And we did that by saying 5 minus 11 gives us negative 6. And now we have the absolute value of negative 6. Well, what is the absolute value of a negative 6? All right, it's 6. So we started off with this expression. We, we resolved it down to its value, which is negative 6. And then we took the absolute value, because now we can't do anything more inside this print these absolute value symbols. Negative 6 can't go any further. So we're at the end. We can now take the absolute value of that number. Example 4, check your understanding. So you know, I'd like you to go ahead and try these on your own. Uh, simplify each expression. Shouldn't be hard. I'll wait for you. Go ahead, stop the video, try it, and then we'll do them together. Okay. I'm going to assume you're back now and that you've uh, stopped the video and you've done this work. So it says simplify each expression. So problem A says the absolute value of 8 minus 7 is what? Well, the first thing you have to do is you have to say absolute value of 8 minus 7 is equal to the absolute value of 8. Oh my, excuse me. <laughs> I'm repeating myself. Absolute value of 8 minus 7 is equal to the absolute value of 1. Let me get back to my color. Absolute value of 1. And so what is the absolute value of 1? The absolute value of 1 is 1. Okay, how about this one? The absolute value of 7 minus 8. So the absolute value of 7 minus 8 is equal to the absolute value of 7 minus 8 is negative 1. And that is equal to what? The absolute value of a negative 1 is a 1. Let's do C. The absolute value of negative 10 Absolute value of negative 10 minus negative 4. Okay, and that equals what? The absolute value of negative 10. Negative times a negative is a positive, so plus 4. Okay, and that equals what? Negative 10 plus 4. Start at negative 10 on the number line, go to the right 4. So it's 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, negative 6. So it's equal to the absolute value of negative 6. And that is equal to what is the absolute value of negative 6? 6 is the absolute value of negative 6. Let's try D. The absolute value of negative 4 minus minus 10, or negative 10. And that equals the absolute value of negative 4 Minus times a minus is a positive, plus 10. And that equals negative 4 plus 10. What else do we know we've learned in the past? You take, when the signs are opposite, you, sub, you subtract them. 10 minus 4 is 6. And you take the, take the sign of the largest add end, as we call it here, right? So it ends up being plus 6. So it ends the absolute value of, 6. And this absolute value of 6 is 6. Okay, good deal. Example 5, evaluating an expression. You can evaluate an expressions that involve subtraction by sub substituting for the variable. Then simplify the expression. So, it says evaluate. Minus a, a negative a, minus b. 4, a equal negative 3, and b equal negative 5. So what we're going to do, we're just going to end up writing the equation. We have it here. It's negative a minus b. So now the next thing it says, substitute, right? Substitute. 
So it says substitute negative 3 for A and negative 5 for the B. So negative 3 for A and negative 5 for B. So I, right here I substitute. So I have negative, I put parentheses, negative 3 minus parentheses, negative 5. The parentheses make it clear that you're not confusing the negative signs. You know exactly where that negative sign goes with. It goes with that number. It belongs to the variable, right? So the parentheses kind of mean like the variable home itself, so to speak. So once we do that, it's negative 3 minus negative 3, which is positive 3. So, and then, so I just did the equal sign here. So it's 3 minus the negative 5. And then we do it again. So now it's 3 plus 5 because 3 plus the two negative signs make a positive sign. So that's 5 plus. So 3 plus 5 is 8. The answer is 8. And you're going to do that now on your... Okay, example 5. Check your understanding. So evaluate each expression for t equals... Do I have this right? t equals minus 2. Yes. And r equals minus 7. Okay, so r is equal to minus 7. So let's, so let's, first of all, let's pause and let you go ahead and do this video. Do this, these four problems. And then when you come back, we'll do them together. I'll wait. Okay, now that you're back, let's, let's see what we come up with. So to start off, we're going to say r, and r is negative 7 and t is negative 2. So r is equal to right here. I'm going to write r minus t okay and that equals r is negative 7 negative 7 and then minus t minus t and t is a negative 2 so i'm going to put in negative 2 right there so this is negative 7 minus a negative 2 these two right here i'm going to change colors let's make it orange here these, this guy and that one, they add up to be positive, right? Multiply them. Negative times a negative is a positive. So now, going back to green. So now we have negative 7 plus 2 is equal to negative 5. Okay? Let's do T minus R this time. We, they just switched them around. This time it's T is negative 2. So equals negative 2 minus, they're still negative, now r is negative 7. So put the parentheses, negative 7. Keep the, the negative 7 together because that's all part of the variable r. So this, these braces kind of imply this is variable r. Okay, so again, the two negatives make a positive. So we have negative 2 plus 7 is equal to... How do we do it? You, since the signs are different, you subtract them. 7 minus 2 is 5, and you take the sign of the larger number, and therefore we have 5. That's the answer to this one. Let's do C. Negative T minus R. And that equals what? Well, negative T is negative 2. Negative 2. Oh. I, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I didn't. I didn't get that right. I'm jumping the gun here. Let's get. It's not negative two. There we go. Go back here. It's negative minus. Where's my pen? Go. Did I go? Where is it? Come on, pen. There you are. Minus two. <laughs> negative and negative two, and then it's minus. Right. R and R is negative seven, negative seven. And now when we can't handle this, it's neg negative times a negative is a positive, so it's two. Negative times a negative is a positive, and it's seven. Two plus seven is equal to nine. And now finally we have negative R minus the quantity negative t. Okay, so negative r is, I'll do it right here, is equal to negative, the quantity of negative, what is r again? r is 7, negative 7, negative and negative 7, minus the quantity 
of negative the quantity 2. T is 2. The quantity negative 2. Okay, so now we have the 7. This is positive now. Negative times the negative is positive. So positive 7. And it's minus 2 negative. So it's positive 2. And then now the outside, this is the inside of the parens. You do the inner parens and the outer parens. And now it's negative times the positive 2. And it's negative 2 again, right? So that equals 2. That was the equal sign right here. Equal. And that equals 7 minus 2 or 5. The interesting thing here is you put the parenthesis and the negative right here, that negative. And the t is still a value of a negative number. So you have to put that t is replaced with a negative 2. So all these negatives show up inside there. And that's why it's negative times a parenthesis here, negative t, in which you have to do another parenthesis to get the negative 2. So look at that. If it's confusing, just look at it for a while and understand that wherever there was a negative inside the parenthesis like that, we had to go a little deeper with more parentheses. Okay, example six, a real world problem. We're going to talk about some stock prices here. It says, find the closing price of stock XYZ on Wednesday by subtracting the change in price from the closing price on Thursday. Well, let's look at the stock table. We got a little stock chart over here on the side. And what we see is we have stock ABC, PQR, and here's, here's XYZ right down here at the bottom. Well, the price of XYZ on Thursday night, that's the closing prices. Okay, these are closing prices. Close right here, close is 17.37 and the change was negative 87 cents 0 0.87 so now let's go over here and look at our equation it says find the closing price of the stock xyz on wednesday so this is thursday prices over here by subtracting the change in price subtracting the change in price from the closing price on thursday so the closing price on Thursday was for XYZ was 1737. I'll even go to red on that. How's that? Right here. 1737 is the closing price. Close. Right there. Closing price. 1737. And it says subtract the, that the change from that price. So 1737 minus the change. Well, the change happens to be what? A negative number, negative 087, 80, subtracting 87 cents. So as you've seen before in previous slides, minus a negative 087. So what happens? And when we resolve this, the two negative signs right here become a positive. So it's 1737 plus 87 cents. And when you add them together, you get $18.24. So the closing share price on Wednesday was $18.24. So the day before, when the stock closed, it was higher by $0.87. Cents. Today, if this is Thursday, today it closed $0.87 cents down. So it lost money, so to speak. Okay? Good. Okay, example six, check six, excuse me, check your understanding. So it says, find the closing price for stocks ABC and PQR on Wednesday. So it's exactly the same thing we just did. Look look at the picture. I'm telling you, here's here's our little chart right over here. We're going to look at that. And as you see, P, ABC is right here and PQR is right here. The last time we used XYZ down here. So go ahead and stop the video. Try it. It's exactly what you just did in the previous slide. And when you come back, we'll look at it. Okay? So I'll, I'll wait. Okay, I'm assuming you took the time to take a look at this. And uh, let's let's try it here. Find the closing prices for the stocks ABC and PQR on Wednesday. And go with our chart here. So the first one is ABC. So what did I do? It says take, what did you do? It says take the closing price. Today's Thursday's closing price right here. The closing price for ABC is $32.79 right here. Here's 32.77. And then it says subtract the change. Well, in this case, the change for ABC 
was a positive 32 cents. It went up 32 cents today. It ended at 32.79 and went up 32 cents. So we want to find out what the price was yesterday at the close. So we're going to add or we're going to subtract the closing price, which is 32 cents, right? And you end up with a price yesterday. The price was $32.47. So the closing price on Wednesday for stock ABC was $32.47. It was lower. The price went up by 32 cents. And now let's try PQR. PQR does the same thing. What was the closing price on Thursday? The closing price on Thursday is 14.23 right there. 14.23. And then it says it tells us to subtract the change. Well, for PQR, the change was negative. And it's a negative $1.23. So we're going to subtract the change. Subtract the quantity negative a dollar twenty three. So when we do that, the two negatives cancel. These two negatives cancel and become a positive. So now we have fourteen twenty three plus a dollar twenty three. And when you add those two together, you get fifteen dollars and forty six cents. So the closing price on Wednesday for the stock PQR was fifteen forty six. It went down a dollar twenty three from Wednesday to Thursday. Okay everyone, thank you.